Hello, welcome to This Side of the Ceiling. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Jill. And we're two good friends trying to live this life on this side of the ceiling, as abundantly as Christ has called us to. We are by no means experts, but we love to study His Word and share everything that He has revealed and taught us. So come along with us as we open up the scriptures and dive into His wonderful Word. Welcome to this side of the ceiling, and we are in the book of Ephesians. We've been studying the place of Ephesus, and we've found ourselves now looking at the book of Ephesians. Um, and Ephesians is actually, I, I want to give you a little bit of background. I think it's helpful to kind of, before we dive in and look at um, a specific spot, to kind of have an overview of the book of Ephesians. We, we looked in Acts and we saw stories about where Paul uh, was living with the people of Ephesus and how he had grown to love them. And we saw lots of, he spent lots of time there. Mm -hmm. um, but, but now we're looking at the letter that he wrote to them. Um, and it's six chapters long and it can be really broken down pretty nicely. Half of it, the first three verses, the chapters. yeah, the first three chapters are very doctrinal. And then the last three chapters are practical, uh, gets, Paul gets very practical about how we can live this out. Um, and there's a there's a popular book by um, an author that was written many years ago um, by a man, Watchman, Watchman, Nee. Watchman Nee, yeah, and who actually died in a prison camp. But he wrote a book called Sit, Walk, Stand about Ephesians. And that is also another way to think about um, the, the letter to Ephesus because the idea, the first part is about our position in Christ. And we're going to see tonight, it's from a sitting standpoint. And then our life in the world, how we walk in this world with each other, and then how we take our stand against the enemy. So mm -hmm. that's another way you can think of Ephesians is our position in Christ, our life in the world, and our attitude with the enemy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to start in... Uh, Chapter 1, verse 15 is kind of where we left off last week. But I was noticing this is a prayer that Paul starts with right after he, you know, gives that one long sentence kind of right. the overture type of what he believes and what they believe. And um, then he goes right into a prayer. And so I wanted to, I, I love praying scripture prayers. I feel like that God's words are so much more powerful than my own words. And so I was just going to read this just as a scripture prayer for all those people listening to this podcast. Yes. And just um, just read it as we are saying this prayer that Paul wrote. So, Dear God, ever since I heard about our listeners' faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for them, and I continue to remember them in my prayers. I ask you, Lord that you give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know you better. I pray also that the eyes of their hearts may be enlightened in order that they may know the hope to which you have called them, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints, and your incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of your mighty strength which you exerted in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in the heavenly realms for far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but in the one to come. And you have placed everything under their feet, his feet and appointed him to be over everything for us, his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a powerful, a powerful prayer that we, we get from Paul, and he is quick to pray for the the people that he spent time with. Mm -hmm. I, I really like how he ends that prayer in verse 22 where he says that that God put all things under Jesus' feet and gave him to be head over all things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you feel like that there are times in your life when you just feel like you're getting in over your head. Right. I think this is a verse that you can remember that it, you may be feeling like you're over your head, things are over your head, you're in over your head. Right. <laughs> but all things are under his feet. Right. There's nothing that's over his head. Everything, mm -hmm. God, this verse says, he's put all things under his feet. So I may be over in over my head, 
but all things are under his feet. And I, I want today to be a real encouragement um, because I want us to look at this idea of where where we start from in Christianity. I don't know if you're listening how long you have been a Christian, but this is an encouraging um, word that we have for you today. And so um, I want to look at the first 10 verses of chapter 2 in Ephesians. And the very first two words, he says, and you. And he's talking to these people. And he says, you were dead in the trespasses and the sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God. So I'm just going to stop there for just a minute because he says, and you, right. we all, and he says, all of us are that way. He makes a point to point that out. Every, All of us were following this pattern of the world and we were uh, living in the passions of our flesh. That's just where we all were. Right. And, and then it says, but God. Mm-hmm. It goes on to say, but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God. Not a result of works so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for great works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, this is really good news. Yes, good <laughs> it's, news. it's hard to understand, though, because the, the, the tense says that God, because of his mercy and his great love for us, he saved us by his grace and raised us up with Jesus and seated us with Jesus mm-hmm. in the heavenly places. So that's hard for us to understand because we're down here on earth and it's saying that he's seated us in past tense. Right. And so in a spiritual, uh, with spiritual eyes, you know, and Paul just got through praying that the eyes would be enlightened, that we can see ourselves already seated in the heavenly with Jesus. So this is too many times, I think, that Christianity, we get the wrong idea, maybe the world gets the wrong idea, and we think that Christianity, if I'm going to be a Christian, then it starts out with a bunch of stuff that I have to do, Right. and we think that Christianity, well, if you're going to be a Christian, then you, this is what you need to do. You need to go to church, you need to get baptized, you need to believe, you need to do all these things. Yeah, or even a list of don'ts. Don't cuss, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Don't have sex before you're married. Right. Yes, that's exactly right. And what this passage is saying is Christianity starts with a big done. Right. This is done. You know, that is one of the things that Jesus said when he was down here. He he said in John five seventeen, My father is working and I am working. And then on the cross, one of the things he says is, okay, it's finished. finished. The work is finished. And once he was resurrected, that same power that he was praying about again has seated him at the right hand of God. And it's done. Right. It is done. And Paul makes a big point of saying it. You've been saved by grace. It's nothing you've done. Right. He said, because if it was, then people would be boasting. So you even that, called it a gift, which is what you receive. Absolutely. And that's the only thing we have to do is receive that gift. Mm-hmm. And if we receive that gift, now, it doesn't mean that we're just going to go sit and never do anything. Right. I, but it, we are going to, and that's what we're going to see later. We, Paul's going to tell us how we need to walk right. and, in this world. But we start from victory. We start from a position of done. This is done. 
And so I think that is super encouraging. Yes, we don't walk in guilt or shame. No. Because it's been done. It's been done. You know, other places in the Bible, all things are ready. Come to the feast. It's mm-hmm. it's done. It's ready. And so I think that we need to recognize that these every new experience spiritually begins with accepting by faith something God's already done for us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do we receive forgiveness? We don't have to work for it. Right. We just have to receive it. Um, God gives us a spirit. God allows us to participate in baptism in his death. And so we get to, it. it is not about what we're doing. It is about the grace that we have. And that is really good news. Yes. Um, I, I think sometimes we, we make it too hard. Right. I know you've been a lifeguard, so mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong about this, but isn't, it, isn't there something about like if someone's really struggling, what do they teach you to do? Well, I mean, if you go out there when they're struggling, you throw them something first, but if they don't grab it, if you go out there when they're struggling, they'll drown you. They'll grab you. And so you have to wait until they give up. And then you go out there or you cause them to give up. You know, like you you push them away and turn them around and, you know, you have them quit. If they're, if they're flailing and struggling, they're going to hurt you. Yeah, and I think that some ways that can be thought of is that, you know, we we can't save ourselves. And right. so, God, sometimes, you know, it's that moment of, I'm drowning, when God, God save me. Mm-hmm. And, and you stop, and then he comes in and, and can save us because we realize, I can't do this. Right. I think, I don't know, I think back that that's such a comforting thought for me in my 50s now. I thought in my 20s that I would get to a point where I was doing this right. I was, yeah, yeah. I was, I could, you know, not, I wasn't getting in trouble with my mouth and I had learned how to be kind and live a life of love and peace and patience. No jealousy. No jealousy. (laughs) Yes. And sad to say, life doesn't go away. Um, I I do think that I've gotten a lot better, praise God. We can look back and see lessons that God has taught me along the way. But I still struggle with this. I still need this grace every day. Right. Um, And and that is okay when I remember His grace is enough. Mm -hmm. And so the big lesson I, I want us to hear today is that Christianity begins with a big done Right. We are seated. And what Paul is going to say is that we have to sit before we walk. Right. And sitting is something you do where you, uh, we rest in what God has already done for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, one more thing I think of is, you know, when God made Adam, it was the sixth day. He'd already made everything and the culmination of his, you know, one of the last things we get record of is he makes man. Right. And then... You know, Adam's fresh. He's just been, you know, his first day of life. I could imagine, okay, what are we going to do, God? Let's go name some animals. Let's go do something. Let's go pick some fruit. What are we going to do? And God says, we're going to rest. Yeah, time to rest. Yeah, the very first thing he does is rest from, Mm -hmm. from his work. So I hope that is an encouragement. And I hope that if you're listening that you'll open up Ephesians and read those first the, the prayer in the first 10 verses of chapter 2 and realize that if you are in Christ, if you have accepted His grace, it's done. And that's where you start from. You are seated. You are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. And He's going to go on and tell us what that looks like. But Paul is praying that the eyes of our heart see us seated with Christ, having that power done. Thanks for listening and journeying with us on this side of the ceiling. See you next time.